The return of client records. In general, a practitioner must, at the request of a client, properly return any and all records that the client uh, that are necessary for the client to comply with his or her federal tax obligations. So it's kind of, you would think this is obvious, but you get in these situations, especially when there's fees that aren't paid or something like that, where the tax preparer doesn't give back and, and actually says refuses to give back the, uh, <laughs> the documents and whatnot. And obviously they're not the tax preparer's documents. They're, they're only there so that you can prepare the tax returns. And so you might, so you got to give them back to the client. You would, and it seems pretty clear. So the practitioner may retain copies of the records returned to a client. So you might make copies in the event that you have to justify, you know, positions and whatnot, but you would give the originals back. You would think that's the general process. The existence of a dispute over fees generally does not relieve the practitioner of his or her responsibility under this section. So if you're going to say, well, if you don't pay my fee, I'm not going to give you your documents back. That's, that just seems childish, but you know, that happens. <laughs> Nonetheless, if applicable state law allows or permits the retention of a client's records by a practitioner in the case of a dispute over fees for service rendered, the practitioner need only uh, return those records that must be attached to the taxpayer's return. So the practitioner, however, must provide the client with reasonable access to review and copy any additional records of the client retained by the practitioner under state law uh, that are necessary for the client to comply with his or her federal tax obligations. So then we have conflicting interests, except as provided by uh, paragraph B of this section, a practitioner shall not represent a client before the Internal Revenue Service if the representation involves a conflict of interest, a conflict of interest exists if. Now note, clearly this should be intuitively kind of makes sense. If you're, you know, if you're going to represent someone saying you are my agent, you're acting on my behalf, I'm paying you to make decisions for me. Your job is to make decisions that are best for me and my interest. Now you already have an agency issue no matter what, because even though you're kind of on the same side, there's always going to be this kind of agency problem where certain decisions are going to benefit the agent differently than the tax preparer. We don't want to complicate the situation by having a complete conflict of interest between someone who's supposed to be acting as an agent, uh, but have, has interests that might be counter to that action. So the representation of one client will be directly adverse to another client. So if you've got two clients, obviously it'd be like it'd be like you're trying to you're trying to represent both sides of like a divorce case that doesn't make any sense right you see you can't really i mean if they're at odds you 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 know then then you're gonna you have to represent one or the other if it's a mutually exclusive kind of thing you would think so uh, and even if you're saying well that's not true like i have had a lot of people argue they say well that's not true because i can be fair i can be just even though uh, there's two people that have these different interests that may well be but even still you can see why they wouldn't want to do it because you don't look to be fair it doesn't look to be just right you do, you, no matter what you say someone's going to argue that you're that you're not being fair even if you totally are being fair and so the fact that that appearance is wrong would mean that someone else would be better suited for that position just due to appearance alone you would think so there is a significant risk that the representation of one or more clients will be materially limited by the practitioner's responsibility to another client, a former client or third person, or by personal interest of the practitioner.